Hello, welcome to another part about the fence tools. In this part, we're going to make the digital asset. So if you hold long, you would by now have this fence from a curve. So we're going to now select everything that we want to be in this tool. So there will be only one node that is not included, which is the curve itself. So this means that, uh, that in Houdini can still control this tool with like different curve data. So I'm um, usually, I'm just going to create a sub network. So this will be like one node and we're going to right click. We can say make the normal digital asset or we can create a versioned digital assets if you are working with production. So let's just use the normal one for now. You can give this a name like tutorial fence tool and we just press save. So then a menu will pop up. So here we are going to create then the parameters. There are some notable things you can do here, but we are mainly going to focus then around making parameters. So let's put it here on this side, like so. So here we have our tool ready. So we have like one single input, which is of course our curve. Then we have our actual tool. We can also like just remove this name. So it's like just now tutorial fans. And in here we can then go and start picking out values as parameters. So right now our tool doesn't have any options or interface. It's just like a blank interface. So let's create some uh, options there. So what I'm going to do as the first one is the beveling here. So the bevel amount. So here we're going to grab that and we're going to give this a proper name like bevel amount. And we also need to set a range for that. So my current value is of 1.5. So maybe our range can be between 0 0.5 and for example, 3. This can be something that you can tweak based on what you might prefer. So I'm going to then press apply. So you will see that now this value has turned green. So that means that there is a link being created. So here, this name, the offset is now linked to that value. So we now have it in place. Now let's look at some other values you might want to change. And here we have the set scaling. So this was something that I made. And this is then the actual value of my model. So here the so here this model will be two, two units. So you of course want to control this here. And we can call this like model size, or we can call this also like spacing or something like that. So we can like space the models uh, evenly along the line. Uh, we have then a further more settings. We also then have here our scaling values, which we can also play around with. And it might be interesting, for example, to also control our height separately. So you can pick out the height values that we created here. So these are like things you can do and play around with. Um, so here, what I also will do is also make an output node. So currently the output will always be the icon, but if you actually force the output with an output node, then this will always be seen as output for my tool. So let's press apply. Now we have our sliders. So let's take a look at that. So we have our fence here. I can play around with this beveling amount so we can make this smaller or we can make this larger. So there might be situations where you want to uh, change that, of course. And then, of course, being here, we have the model size. So here we can play around with that and it will be squeezed into place. So it might be interesting to have like more settings, play around with more scaling values. But for now, these are like the two base sliders I would actually like to have. So we can actually already test this out in game engine. But let's maybe take a look at adding, for example, a bit more uh, sliders, for example, for creating the height. So when we go back here, we then have our set scaling. And for example, let's set a scaling for the height. So I'm going to replace this one by typing a custom channel. So I'm going to type in channel and I'm going to say that this is, uh, for example, the height value. And then we close that off like so. And right now it's not going to do anything. You can see that my models will basically get squeezed. So we need to press this button here on the side and it will actually now create this slider for me. So by default, it's one. So we're going to again grab this and say height models, for example. And the range should go from maybe 0 0.5 to 2. And press apply. And if we go back, we then have that slider. So what you can see now is that our scaling of the corner pieces are not with that. So we also need to define how we can also scale these pieces. There are multiple ways on how we can do that. So either we can also 
define a scaling value here with attributes so we can uh, for example uh, let's do create attribute and here in create attribute we can define the value of scale and of course we need to set the value of scale so we can see that by default the scaling is 0 0 0 so that means that we don't have any models so we're going to say uh, dimension of three because we want to have x y and z and then we're going to just say one 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 and if we now press this two you will see that this fence will also now jump up so we can just grab here our logic so this green bar so we can just copy paste this reference this is a direct link to the value and we can pop copy paste this over here in the height and as you can see now this is fitting what you could also for example do is you could also place a transform value here so the transform node and you could just scale the model itself so if i actually just scale the model before it gets copied then we will also do a scaling of that so that might also be interesting to think about as well so you can do that in multiple ways so right now here we are having that scaling value so we can just nicely scale us up and down as you can see so this might be interesting if you feel like you might want to like scale this a bit up so you can tweak that so you can play around with these values and have like better control you can also here like here we can clearly control the spacing so if you want to have more control over here over this spacing part uh, we can also like again maybe do a transform over here and we can for example grab the scale and make this bit bigger or larger so here we can grab for example this part and then we can say corner stretch for example and this can go from maybe not that large so maybe 0.7 to 0.2 so we're like not stretching it too much and apply and now we can have like a part where as you can see we can sort of like fine tune a bit more about how the corners are so you can for example add more of these models if you want that you can then increase that if you of course you can go higher but of course don't go too high but you can increase that value you can of course link these two values together that's so that's up to you if you want to like link those values together but it might be interesting that the user has like individual control over that what can also be interesting is then of course adding folders so we can create two folders here for example so we have our main settings so settings and then we have for example the values that specifically targets corner settings so here we have the height uh, and the model size so these can for example be the main settings and then the corner and bevel amount these are like specifically for the corners so we're gonna press apply and now we have like tabs of that it's mainly up to you how big you want to expand this menu you can add much more different sliders you can experiment with different options here to have variation you can maybe add different styles or types you can maybe add options for different rotations and so on so you can play around with that as well what you could also do is if you don't like the corner system you can always build in switch nodes to turn things on or off so here currently if let's say we don't like the corner system we can always turn these things off so here i can build a switch node so when our value is zero it will be off which is just a null node and when the value is one it will then output the, the corner pieces so we can here make a toggle for this so we're going to grab the switch node the default value will be one so i'm going to grab it here place it on the top and i'm going to say enable corners and the default value will be one which means it will be on so we want this to be a toggle so i'm going to switch the type here from integer to all the way down here to toggle now i'm going to just press accept and here if we go to corners we now can enable or disable this so as you can see we can for example say that this can also be a potential result for example if you don't like the corner system or maybe the artists who are using the tool have something else in mind where they don't necessarily need that corner data they can then just turn this on or off so that might be interesting for them to play around with so that was it for this video so we wrapped up everything into one digital asset and next video we're going to go over it into unreal and test out this tool